To paraphrase a former first lady, it takes a community to raise a child. When we come back, we'll look at a North County partnership that's doing just that. Hi, I'm Bruce Grantham, and welcome to Our Children, Our Future, a program about education in the South San Francisco Unified School District. In many communities, school district and city boundaries overlap. That's the case in the North County, where South San Francisco Unified School District has two elementary schools in the city limits of Daly City. Those would be Unipercera and Skyline Schools. This has resulted in both the Daly City community and the two schools benefiting from a local partnership. We're going to see a segment where I interviewed Tim Sullivan, principal of Skyline School, and Terry Gavin of Unipercera School when they were talking about the Daly City Peninsula Partnership Collaborative. I'm here this morning with uh, Principal Terry Gavin from Unipercera School and Tim Sullivan from Skyline School, both located in Daly City city limits, but part of the South San Francisco Unified School District. We're going to be talking uh, this morning about the Daly City Peninsula Partnership Collaborative that both schools are involved in. Terry, what is the Daly City Partnership? Well, first of all, it's a remarkable, successful, and really wonderful program. And it's truly, just as its name implies, a partnership. It's made up of over 60 different organizations, um, agencies, institutions, and community services that come together to meet the needs of the community, both um, health, um, social services, and um, educational needs. And under the direction of Ed Barney, who established the um, partnership in 1995, the program has um, grown with each year and expanded its services. One important component of the partnership is that it has bi-monthly meetings. And all these different agencies come together in almost like a town setting. And we um, meet together to make announcements, express our concerns, um, offer suggestions, and then we break up into smaller groups and we come up with uh, ways to better um, these different um, services we offer for the um, community. Unipercera is an active participant in the Daily City Partnership and we've benefited from the services and from the outreach um, program. Who are some of the agencies? Give us a feel for the types of agencies that are involved in the partnership. Well, most of the schools in the Daly City, um, Daly City um, School District and, of course, our two schools in South San Francisco Unified. Also, Kaiser is a participant. We've got the uh, Daly City uh, Police and Fire mm -hmm. uh, Services. We've got the Public Library, Daly City Public Library, um, and countless different uh, senior residents, um, that sort of thing. And some social agencies, county social well. agencies. Mm -hmm. And I know Ed Barney is Park and Rec, so yes. the city of Daly City is very much involved. Right. It's very representative of many, many in, in different the partnership. Areas. And so the, my understanding is then the partnership comes together and they identify needs in the community mm -hmm. under those categories of education, uh, health, and social services. Social services. Mm -hmm. and, and so then they, they decide where to provide these services. And obviously these services cost money, which leads to the funding question. Where does the partnership derive its funding? Okay. Well, I can take that. Uh, the partnership has uh, funding from the county services. 50% comes from that. 25% uh, percent comes from the Peninsula, Peninsula Partnership. And then the city of Daly City provides 10%. The schools actually put their own money into it, another 10%. And then the final 5%, they have a variety of grants and things like that. What is the individual school's contribution, your two schools? We pay $5,000 a year, which is well worth it. Mm -hmm. They give us a lot more services than the $5,000 that we put in. And I think you both kind of computed uh, the, the cost in, in return. We about would say how much? approximately between... Uh, Twenty and twenty-five thousand right. dollars worth of services for the five that we put in, and a lot of services we would never have gotten if they didn't have it. 
Right. So let's talk about those services. Terry, what kind of services has the partnership provided at uh, UNIP Procera? Well, each year it changes, but we have a program coordinator, Jennifer Javier Ali, who comes and meets with me in September, and we assess the needs. Usually by that time I've met with the staff and we determined what exactly we need to strengthen our program and enrich our school. And so Jennifer and I sit down and, for example, this year we determined that we need um, three reading intervention programs, so we set those up for the first and second uh, grade students. And then I also said, oh, we really would like a math enrichment program. So we have that taking place. We are also, for the spring, have a PowerPoint class scheduled. Um, but in the past, we've had drama classes. We have, an, um, of course, our kindergarten readiness and an after-school homework program. Then again, there's that second component, the outreach um, to our community services, where the police and fire department have come in and helped us as well. We have Officer Weilin Shu coming in, and he's working on our safety plan, which is, of course, very important with mm -hmm. our district sure. right now. Um, so it's making our drills, our fire and our emergency drills, not just um, you know practice drills, but meaningful drills. So if our children go out into the community and there's an emergency, they know what to do. Um, Officer Shu also comes in and he works with the character building classes that we have up at Unipera Serra. So that's what the partnership provides, not only intervention services, but those sort of community building relationships. Wide range, wide range of services. What about at your school? We have very similar services. We have homework club and as Terry mentioned, they have a variety of enrichment programs. We, we have a large Filipino population, so we have Filipino dance, we have drama, we have uh, art, scrapbooking, uh, photography. We even had ceramics at one time. We do have a homework club just like she does. We also have tutoring programs that really benefit our kids. Without that, it would be very hard to give a lot of these extra incentive and extra programs for kids that need help. But how many uh, students or families are served by each of your schools in the partnership? Well, we figured, I think, uh, about 200 right. all total with the, uh, the, summer, the summer program with the kindergartners, which mm -hmm. is an outstanding program. Um, with all of them together, it's almost 200 kids. And so that's about 50% of, mm -hmm. of, of, right. of your schools. Each of your schools. You touched on something that we're going to talk about in the second segment, which is uh, pre-kindergarten or kindergarten <coughs> readiness programs. And the services that, or, or the, the program that you have at both your schools is uh, the funding is provided by the partnership. What's kindergarten readiness like at, at your pro, at your schools? Well, it just helps the children. It's a three or four week program, depending on how we set it up, for the the newly um, accepted children to come in and get a feel of how the kindergarten day goes. And so they come to the um, campus and they uh, actually participate in the classroom activities. They get to meet their teachers. They get to be in the classrooms. And this is all in the summertime, right before school starts. So it's a big jump start on, on kindergarten. And once again, the Daily City Partnership funds that program at right. your site also. At our site And also. I assume it's a similar program. Very similar program. We have outstanding teachers at both schools. Right. Um, they uh, familiarize the students with the uh, program, uh, the logistics of the school, where they go, where the restrooms are, uh, what they do during a school day. It makes it much easier transition for when they come to school in the fall. It's, it's like they're, they're coming home again. So it's always traumatic, but this, really traumatic. Le this, this lessens it for the both the students and, 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 the, the, parents. and the parents. They get used to it. Kindergarten recruitment. This is the time of the year when we're recruiting for kindergarten. I know last year uh, your school, Juniper Sarah, did a, 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 quite a sweep in terms mm -hmm. of recruiting in the community. Tell us quickly what that was about. Well, we have a wonderful school with a wonderful staff in a wonderful school district. As Tim does, As too. As, As Tim, Tim does, does, too. Okay. <laughs> and we want the community to know about that. So we decided to go out to the community, we created a flyer when the children uh, drew a picture, and then we had all the other children color in the picture. We created this flyer, and all the children participated. We went out with the staff, the, the faculty, the parents, and the teachers, and we went and we, uh, you know, just spread that flyer around. We called on our partnership um, friends to help us um, also advertise our, um, you know, program. And we want the children in our neighborhood to go to our neighborhood school. We have a good program, and we want them to come to our How school. How successful was it? Very successful. We had full kindergarten programs, and we increased our root enrollment by 55 children. Excellent. Any uh -huh. plan on doing that again? Absolutely. Tim, do you do something similar or somewhat similar, but. Uh, we have not been as extensive as Terry, but we, we do spread the word as much as we possibly can about our programs, and we have an outstanding uh, school. We have very high test scores, and we've done very well, and we maintain a, a good group of teachers, excellent teachers that really assist us in spreading that. And we have a really nice community of families, and teachers and parents all work together. We've done a lot of great fundraisers. 
that have allowed us to add extra programs, such as our current Walkathon fundraiser that's going on right now. And it all starts with kindergarten, and the partnership has really made it this all happen. What would happen uh, to your programs if the partnership went away? Uh, very difficult. It would be a very difficult transition for our, our kindergartners coming in because uh, it really provides a nice thing for the parents and the kids to get used to the school. Right. We would miss it. It would be tough to, to lose those Terrible. programs, wouldn't it? Terrible. Grateful to the Davy City Partnership. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to that big kindergarten push. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. What did you learn in the sandbox in kindergarten? Well, kids nowadays are learning that and a lot more. Stay with us to learn more about pre-kindergarten when we come back. Prudential California Realty is pleased to support the South San Francisco Unified School District. With several offices located throughout the South Bay, we help home buyers realize their dreams of ownership and sellers maximize their home investment. Prudential California Realty is a longtime partner with education, having created the Education Foundation in 1992, which provides grants to teachers throughout Northern California. Prudential California Realty, your partner in real estate. You've always been like a son to me, Mikey. And that's why I find it unfortunate that we're in this little situation here. Peninsula TV, how will it affect you? How a child starts off in school is so important for the child and the parents. A quality kindergarten readiness program can lessen the stress on both the child and the parent. With me to talk about their pre-kindergarten program in kindergarten are John Thompson, principal of Sunshine Garden School, and Nicole Casagrande, kindergarten teacher at Sunshine Gardens. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for coming on tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Nicole, what is the Kindergarten Readiness Program What is at Sunshine Gardens? What's, uh, what, what is that program? It's a program that allows um, incoming kindergartners to uh, get ready, a two-week program before school starts in the summertime. And uh, primarily it targets children who um, haven't had preschool experience, but it is open to other children if there's openings available. Does that make sense? <laughs> sure. Yeah. How many students do you serve? Uh, about, there's two pre-K classes, so there's 20 in each class, so 40 students. And we have three kindergarten classes in the regular year. And when does that kindergarten, in the summertime, when yeah, does it fall? Yeah, it's Sunshine Gardens because it's different with each school in South City. It's Sunshine Gardens, it's in August, uh, and when there's one week break between the pre-K and then the regular school, so it's right, right before school starts. So that they don't forget all yeah, what exactly, they did in pre-kindergarten. All that hard work. <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't, doesn't go down the drain. Exactly. And, and they take that right into kindergarten uh, in September or late August when they start school. Right, exactly. John, do all the schools in South San Francisco have pre-kindergarten programs? For the past few years, every elementary school in, in the South City Unified School District has had the pre-K program. Uh, how is the Sunshine Gardens program funded? Our program is funded through a grant through the Peninsula Foundation. So there's absolutely no cost to the parent at all. And you, you, you t supplies and, and all of that and is funded with the program? They offer a great bag that each student gets with uh, magnetic letters and chalkboards and chalk and pencils. And we also get an aid for the pre-K program, which is essential when all these students are coming in and she helps with everything. It's great. What does your pre-K class look like? And you'd prefer to call it pre-K, no, yeah. not kindergarten readiness, <laughs> it's the but pre-K. Yeah, it, yes, okay. it all works. Yes, it all works. What's pre-K look like? What are you doing there? It's a lot of fun. You know, it's a, it's a time where it's less stressful because, you know, it's the two weeks of comfort, and we can get them regulated to the rules and the procedures. We have dancing and singing, and a big part of it is that we teach them nursery rhymes, nursery rhymes because a lot of them are just learning English. It's a great way to start learning English. Mm -hmm. Uh, cutting. Uh, a lot of them come in not knowing how to write their name. That's a big focus. You know, let's get them to hold the pencil and 
or start writing their names. And so a lot of these students then transition right into your kindergarten class, right. so you can be training them and working with them the way you do things. Exactly. Uh, I have a, at least half of them are going to be in my class the following year, so <clears throat> that's a really good start because they can teach the other incoming kindergartners my procedures, my rules, how to sit on the carpet, how to walk in line, and then it just flows much easier when the Let's take a look starts. at the video that we shot. Our student yeah. film crew came and visited your classroom mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and we shot your kindergarten class. Uh, we took film of your kindergarten day. class. We didn't shoot it. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that film now. Okay. And tell us a little bit about what goes on in Nicole Casagrande's kindergarten class. Okay. Well, this particular day was a crazy day. It was the 100th day of school. And uh, on that day, we focused on a lot on, on math and doing everything that has to do with 100. So we didn't get, make a necklace with patterning, 100 Cheerios and uh, Fruit Loops. And we make... Uh, a food graph that 100 pieces of food and we count with ones tens hundreds here we start the day off with the pledge of allegiance and calendar so who's the little girl with the flag that's my star student every day there's a different student who's the star student and today was picture day in this so she was dressed for pictures also and um what are these guys doing yeah what are they doing I think they're putting away their crayons. <laughs> exactly <laughs> And then this is a typical part of the day, focus time when we learn a letter of the week and the letters of the week eventually progress to learning uh, reading and writing and, and here we are, uh, they're going to write a word. So this is beginning of blending and segmenting because soon they're, gonna, they're writing sentences and they need to be reading by the end of the year. So. Academics. Yes. Not all fun in kindergarten. No, huh? no, no more. Not all sandbox. Yeah. <laughs> And then of uh, course, but this is the fun yeah. part. Well, they are in kindergarten, so we always do silly dances, and we do still have fun. But there's a lot of academics mixed in for sure now. It must wear you out by the end of the day. Yeah, a lot of times I like to go home and take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can see why, John. We're gonna. I think we're we're hitting a little part here where they're doing some of the uh, the hundred day activities at the table, and uh, we're gonna get a shot of you joining them at the table doing some of their work at the table. And I noticed that you, you, you crouch down to get, get down at their level. We're not quite there yet. What are we doing, the chicken dance there? Yeah, we are doing the chicken dance. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We're a little ahead of ourselves. And these yeah. are these are the... Uh, the uh, this is torn, popsicle during the, sticks? Yeah, during the calendar, because that is, finally, we've made 100 sticks. It's a stick that goes in the box for every day of school. We've made it to 100th. And actually, there's, if you can see, there's a, cal a caterpillar. And on the 100th day, the caterpillar turns into a butterfly. So they wait for that all, all 100 days. So a little science instruction. Yeah, going there's along a lot with, going, going on. Along with everything else. Exactly. Here we come. Here we come. They're working on their, their 100, 100 food graph. Yeah. With Cheerios and candy and marshmallows. Everything to rev them up, yes. And there's Principal Thompson. <laughs> well, probably the first thing you notice when you walk into a kindergarten classroom is everything is, of course, geared to scale for the kindergarten kids. So you get down to scale with them. Exactly. Yeah, John, this is your first year as an elementary principal, yes. and your background's in secondary, high school. Yes. What's your impression of kindergarten? Kindergarten is such a wonderful place. It's, it's where you can see so much learning going on so quickly. It, it's, it, my first experience at Sunshine Gardens was, well, on the first hour of the first day, Nicole came into my office and said, John, you need to come into my classroom, and I did. And we were able to uh, take care of some of the concerns she had early on in the pre-K program, and then I've seen those students progress throughout the year to where they're at now. One of the things you talked about, you said that you were, you were kind of amazed at the, the amount of academic progress that kindergarten students make. It's truly amazing to see kids, when they come in to the kindergarten program, some kids don't know any letters, other kids know all their letters and, and words. And at this point, seeing kids... All the, all the kids progress to the point where they're, they're getting the basic fundamental skills they need to read. They're writing words. They're recognizing words. They're putting sentences together. And by the end of the year, they'll be able to have the basic school, skills they need to be able to read and, and move on to first grade. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And you go into kindergarten every day? I go into kindergarten. I try to get into a kindergarten classroom every single day. I need my... Uh, my your, your kindergarten fix? Yes. Uh, <laughs> what are the advantages of enrolling a student in a pre-kindergarten program? It's, it's really important because, <clears throat> like I said, it really gets them ready for, for kindergarten. It gets them um, used to what school is like. And for a lot of these students, they've never experienced school before. So just walking in line and sitting on a carpet needs to be taught to them and how to sit in the chair and how to write their name. These things are things that we forget 
that children need to learn. And so by getting them into pre-K, they get these fundamental bases. And then when kindergarten actually starts, the teacher, myself or whoever their teacher is, can really start teaching them. And there's so much that needs to be learned, just like John was saying. I mean, they come in, you know, so most of them not knowing their name, and they're leaving reading and writing small sentences and doing addition and subtraction. So there's a lot that needs to go on in that year. Uh, c can you tell the difference uh, in kindergarten between the students who had a pre-K experience and those in your class who didn't? Yeah, definitely, because like we test, we uh, test them in the beginning of pre-K and the end of pre-K, and the uh, results in just two weeks' time is, is substantial. They're cutting, they're holding their pencil, they're writing their name, they know nursery rhymes, they're beginning to speak English for some Plus of them. But you said the pre-K students help the non pre K yeah. students and then, get that's into right. the routine. So, right, and then they have the routine, so they also help those other students follow the routine. John, quickly, this is the kindergarten uh, uh, registration period. Uh, what should parents do who are looking to register their students for kindergarten and, and or pre K? Well, if the stu parents know what school they live there is in their attendance area, they can go to that school and enroll directly. If they don't, they can contact our district office, and whoever answers the phone there will help them figure out which school they need to enroll in. But definitely ask about pre-K because it makes ask a big about difference. Pre-K, absolutely. Thank you both for coming on. Thank you. Great experience. Thank Gotta you. love kindergarten, huh? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> in our spotlight segment, we're going to meet a young man who learned his lesson so well in kindergarten that he has turned his work in the classroom and on the athletic fields into a four-year university scholarship. You're not going to want to miss meeting this young man. Stay with us. If you live on the peninsula, there's only one place to get the latest news on business, sports, politics, education, and your community. Peninsula TV, Channel 26, the Peninsula and South Bay's Emmy Award-winning programming resource. For more information or for a programming schedule, go to pentv.tv or call us at 650-637-1936. Peninsula TV, your community programming channel. Real Estate with Bobby Decker is for anyone who owns a home or aspires to do so. Everything that is important to or an interesting facet of home ownership will be covered by our program. Please join us. You won't want to miss Real Estate with me, your host, Bobby Decker. Emmy Award-winning Peninsula TV provides a large multifunctional TV studio and video production facility, state-of-the-art equipment, and affordable prices. Let our professional staff and crew produce your company or organization's next video, or create your own TV series and air it on one of the Bay Area's largest community cable channels. Contact Peninsula TV at pentv.tv or call 650-637-1936. Welcome back. In our spotlight tonight is Kanapi Eliapo, a senior at South San Francisco and a very special student athlete. On February 2nd, National Signing Day, Kanapi signed a letter of intent to accept a four-year scholarship to play football at the University of Utah. With me in studio tonight is Kanapi, Frank Morrow, his varsity football coach, and Rich Salvato, academic coach. First of all, congratulations, Kanapi, on... Uh, this wonderful, this outstanding achievement, this wonderful opportunity to go away to school and play football. How's it, how's it feel to you to accept a, a four-year scholarship to play football at one of the top Division I football programs in the country? I'm very overwhelmed and I'm thankful to um, receive a four-year scholarship to one of the top schools in the nation. Number four, 12-0 and 0 last year. Yes. That's pretty impressive. When were you offered the scholarship? I was offered during the season. And everybody, I'm sure, asks you this question at school. How much is a, four, a full ride, a four-year scholarship to the University of Utah worth? It's about $130,000. That's impressive. That's kind of overwhelming, isn't it, when you think about it? That's a lot of money. Coach, I'm not going to ask Kanapi because I know he's too modest to, to talk about himself. But what were some of, of uh, Kanapi's accomplishments on the football field that, uh, that uh, has resulted in him getting this opportunity? Well, Kanape was a first-team All-Leaguer his sophomore year, second-team All-Leaguer his junior year. He was a first-team All-League linebacker this year, uh, linebacker of the year in our league this year, and defensive player of the year. 
and he was also our blanket award winner, which you know talks about his all around. And that's all around character yeah, as well as exactly. athletic ability and so forth. Yeah. Uh, what are his statistics? Okay, oh, Canop is a pass rusher. He'll chase any quarterback around, but you know he plays. He defends the whole field. He'll run sideline to sideline and chase anybody down. A linebacker, how tall? He's six two, two sixty. You know he could play standing up or down on all fours if he wants to play. Be a D lineman. And his 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 time in running the forty. He ran a four nine, and you know he's probably a little bit faster than that right now. Uh, was was he recruited by any other uh, schools? Yeah, we had BYU come by. We had uh, Utah State. We had um, P. Carroll from Uni uh, University of Southern California came, and we watched film in my classroom on Kanabe. Why did you choose Utah? Why was that the place you wanted to go? They were the only school that offered me a four-ride scholarship. That's an honest, <laughs> an honest answer. <laughs> they're, they're the smart school. Rich, what is your role as academic coach at South San Francisco High School? Well, I'm with the Play It Smart program. We're sponsored by the National Football Foundation. And my basic job on campus is to monitor and aid the academic progress of uh, all student athletes at the school. We mainly work with uh, the football players, though. We hold study halls and run um, SAT workshops, study skill workshops, and uh, job application workshops and things of that sort. And you've worked with Kanapi, obviously, as well as the other football players. What kind of student is Kanapi? Well, I, I've been at South City for about a year and a half now, and the time I've spent with, uh, with Kanapi has been, uh, has been a pretty good experience. He's uh, a good example for all students, all student athletes at the school. He's a hardworking, dedicated student athlete. I emphasize student athlete because he's a student first. Uh, he... He has, he's determined, he had a set of goals that he was um, determined to accomplish, and he did that. How's your family feel about you going away to Utah to play football? Um, they feel very good and they're happy. I'd like to thank my mom and my dad. They've always been there for me, my through thick and thin, and my family, my brother and my sisters, and they're, they're very happy and proud of me. They're going to go back to Utah to see you play? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. The family will be there for you. Uh, you have a younger brother. Yes. And what grade is he in? He's a junior this year. A junior. Football player? Yes. And does he want to follow in Big Brother's footsteps? Absolutely. What do you think his chances are? The chances are very high. Would you like to see him join you at Utah? Of course. <laughs> Who's better? Well, I'm going to say me. I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have confidence in yourself, don't you? Yes. Kanapi, what do you plan on studying when you go to Utah? Because I know when we first met, one of the things I was really impressed with is, is that you realize that this is an opportunity for you to get an education, and that's important to you. When you go back to Utah, what are you going to study? I'm going to study criminology. And what do you want to do with a degree in criminology? Perhaps be, become a probation officer to help the kids. What are your football goals? Um, Come on, don't be bashful. <laughs> what are, what are your, what's your ultimate goal in football? My ultimate goal is to make it to the NFL. And if you don't make it? Um, come back to San Francisco and just... And work in probation? Yes. But more importantly, to get your degree? Get my degree. Yeah, and your family will be very proud of you when you do that. I'm very impressed. You're a very humble guy. But I, wouldn't, I don't think I'd want to meet you on the football field <laughs> anytime soon. Any advice for young football players that might be watching? Just do good in school and like set your goals and be honest to yourself. Don't fool yourself and don't lie to yourself because, I mean, life is hard. And playing football is hard. I don't imagine this came... Playing football is hard and train hard and everything. I don't imagine this, this, this came easy. This kind of opportunity doesn't come to everybody. And I think probably the more you play, the, the more you realize that this is a wonderful opportunity that you've gotten. I just want to wish you, you know, all the best. Good luck to you. Want to watch you on TV. Want to see you do well. And uh, think of us back home uh, when you're out there, because uh, not only you're representing your family, but you're representing South San Francisco High School and your coaches. And and uh, make us proud when you go back there. Will you do that for us? Yes. Okay. And we'll touch base with you. Find out how you're doing. Okay. Okay. From kindergarten to a graduating senior going to college, we've touched about all the bases tonight. I'm Bruce Grantham for Our Children, Our Future, and I'll see you next time.